Hello, everyone, and welcome to Petite to Queen's Claim Your Career Crown podcast. I'm your host, Lynn, and today I'm joined by our wonderful guest, Amy Anderson. Today, we're going to be talking about how you can build a truly impactful culture in an organization today. And I want to tell you about Amy because she is an amazing woman. She's widely respected and a creative industry leader with more than 25 years of experience at brands such as Calvin Klein, Seventeen, and the New York Times Digital. As the co-founder of Wild Coffee Marketing, she focuses on transforming businesses through a diverse set of discipline and tailor-made teams, sending the unique opportunity to blend creativity and data or I should say seeing the unique opportunity to blend creativity and data, she improves both brands and entire organizations. Amy's specialties expand across brand strategy, creative design, digital marketing, PR, and marketing consulting. Building wild coffee from the ground up has allowed Amy to have a unique perspective to the entrepreneurial journey especially as it relates to scaling startups and leading with compassion during demanding times. So Amy, I am really excited for this show um, and to hear what you have to share with us. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Lynn. And before we get started, for those of you who are joining us for that very first time, make sure you don't miss a single episode of Claim Your Career Crown by subscribing wherever you get your podcasts. And while I'm on the subject, if you love the show and you love what we're doing, please take a moment and leave us a five-star review. We would very much appreciate it. Well, Amy, you know, you've had such a storied past and the career. I'm really interested to hear what inspired you to get started with Wild Coffee Marketing. And by the way, I love the name. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's interesting. You know, um, people ask us about the name quite a bit. Um, And it's actually a plant native to South Florida that was growing outside my window while I was writing my business plan. So it is not the coffee you could brew. It's quite bitter. It's not Arabica, but it's a native plant down here that has these glossy, beautiful leaves. And I was having to cut it back with a machete uh, while I was in my office outside. And I said, well, what an amazing metaphor for a company that's going to grow and for the growth strategies we do for our companies. Plus it has some stopping power. People will ask me about it. And yes, they do think that we actually market coffee companies, but um, (laughs) it's fun to clarify that. Um, So it's interesting. I was not, uh, I consider myself an uh, accidental entrepreneur. I am not one of those women who always had a side hustle, who had dreams of working for myself and not someone else. I was quite the opposite. I was actually a corporate marketing person from the time I graduated college. I worked in big marketing teams, had big budgets and some interesting brands. And it wasn't until I got divorced uh, and had two young boys. And looked at them and said, you know what, if I go back into the workforce the way I was working, then I will not be here for these these young people who I adore. And uh, I was fortunate enough that I went to my parents and asked if they would be my first friends and family investors for my consulting business. And I said, you know, I've been doing this for other people for so long. Is it possible for me to build something on my own on a consulting basis? And they gave me 12 months uh, of runway. Uh, to be able to support myself and my family by myself. Um, And I actually was able to make it happen. Wow, that's wonderful. Congratulations. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Not what I set out to do, uh, but it's been a really wonderful run. And part of the reason I have found success is from um, partnering with my former hiring manager um, at my prior job, uh, that who we have been together off and on in work and t- for 20 years. So he and I rejoined forces. And so I have a very powerful partnership in place that's helped us scale the business. Well, that's wonderful. I mean, and you know, you can't do it alone. <laughs> Anybody no. who thinks they can, <laughs> no. um, you definitely need a great team and, uh, around you. So that really brings us to the building an impactful culture in your business. And, you know, I'm really curious about, you know, your approach, how you do this, if you have some specific process that you follow, um, what, how do you bring that into the forefront? Well, what's interesting is Wild Coffee has been a distributed company since 2017. 
So when COVID hit, we actually didn't have to make any major shifts with how we work, how we communicate. So we were very fortunate in that way. I've always just hired um, the best talent I could find. We have three team members in Seattle, three in Dallas. So we're actually across um, six states. But I knew in order to be effective, you have to create a culture of accountability and really decide what your unique sort of culture and the spirit of your organization is going to be. Um, first of all, project management software helps. Um, we can actually see what's happening all day, every day, and use it as a collaboration platform. So even something simple like Basecamp or Monday, where some people start, is really helpful in sort of pushing workflow through an organization. What's important to me, and especially that was highlighted during those the pandemic times that I don't even like to talk about anymore, is seeing people as whole people in. You know, when you are leading an organization, they're not made up of employees, they're made up of human beings. And human beings don't just have work needs, they have life needs and emotional needs and balance needs. So I really try to look at them as a whole person and understand what motivates them what understand what lights them up, you know, what career paths we can give them, what they love to do, what they hate doing, um, what are their personal demands on their life and how can we accommodate that? You know, my, my goal is to create the best place to work where people develop and learn and grow and can work anywhere, but they don't want to. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's wonderful. So, you know, as you're building the culture and then you're working with your clients, is this something that comes into the work that you do with them to help them build out um, a better culture in their organization? I know with the, you know, the marketing side of it, but I'm curious how that plays a role. Oh, that's interesting. Well, marketing now, because we have internal marketing, right? Uh, and marketing communications, plus sort of the external piece, marketing has become super important because of the digital first experience, right? So we, everything we do sort of bleeds into the technology teams, HR teams and communicating and rewarding and recognizing employees. Um, we work with a, a chain of 63 formal wear rental stores, and we are very much a part of their internal marketing for learning, development, recognition. And so because we understand brands, very well externally, we're able to bring the spirit of those brands internally into the communications and how that works. Um, I also think that getting to know your people, just like you're getting to know your clients, is really, really important. Um, and I think all companies that are distributed should strive to spend time together if they're not doing so in the office or even outside the office. And we have a meeting every Friday where every team member, we do a segue, an icebreaker, where every team member tells us their best personal moment of the week and their best business moment of the week. And really what I'm trying to do is to get to know them I'm trying to understand what gets them excited about work. You know, what, what really do they feel um, excited about accomplishing in that week? So I think there are little tricks in that way um, that you can bring that in. Um, and then every client is unique and you have to sort of help them with their internal marketing to bring that to life internally as well. Right, right. Well, it, it's so ironic because we do the same thing on every one of our team meetings. <laughs> <laughs> do you really uh, again, best business, best week. personal? Um, you know, it's just, it's pretty much more the, you know, um, you know, what um, do they want to sh share from a personal, whether it is, uh, you know, a triumph or a challenge or just something in between. And then the right. same about work. And yeah, so and you can get a pulse on everybody differently. Yeah. And, and you get a pulse on everyone personally right. and professionally. And, you know, Zoom or Microsoft Teams culture, you know, we don't have the benefit of the in-person time. So I think it really takes an effort, uh, not just, I think the accountability issue has really been solved for a lot of people, you know, maybe different in bigger companies, but we're 20 people. So I, I have a pulse on sort of what's happening in the organization where work is flowing, but it's the, the notes to them on Slack before they leave for vacation. That's really important to me. Have the time of your life. Please take Uber. So you know that yeah. to connect with them in that way, because I do care about them. It's an honor for me that they've chosen Wild Coffee on their career stop. And I, I think we all need to look at our teams. You know, it's an employee first culture right now. And I think a lot of us are really lucky when we have and find great team members on board. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know that I'm very grateful. I have the same team that I started with. So that's incredible. <laughs> we've, we've added a one or two people along the way, but, um, it's just been this constant. So, 
Um, I'm curious, you know, as you were building your business and creating this culture, but was there anything ever that sort of held you back that, you know, you had negative Nelly, you know, whispering or maybe screaming in your ear, no, you can't, or. I didn't think I could charge what the work deserved. I think that's one of the biggest challenges we have as entrepreneurs is how, especially in a service-based business, you know, I know there are a lot of business coaches out there, sales consultants, right? You know, how do you command the pricing that you know the work deserves, but you're early in your life cycle as a company? I think that was one of the most challenging things to really look at the work that my team did and place a market value on it that it deserved. And, you know, I wanted them to have confidence in our going out and pitching them, pitching the work, getting the compensation and creating financial stability for everyone, right? There are 20 families who depend on twice monthly payrolls. And that's a very big deal to me as a business owner. So yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're working with your clients, um, you know, whether it's about, you know, their culture or, um, you know, the marketing strategies that you work with them on, what's one of the common things that you find there that will hold people back? Is it something similar? Yes. They start doing before they have strategy. And I think what's happening with in-house marketing teams now is that it's very hard to cover all the skill sets you need in a digital first world. So people will try to hire an in-house person or two or they'll have an in-house person or no in-house people and have a series of freelancers. And then what happens is there's no sort of strategy rooted in what they're doing. And we see companies, 80, $90 million who maybe have two freelancers, but they're missing 80% of the skill sets and activities they need to really propel a business forward. So we, we insist at the beginning of every engagement that we have Um, And we work with some regional brands and mostly national, but you'd be surprised, Lynn, that that strategy work has not been done. No, no, I'm not surprised. (sighs) I'm not surprised at all. They just start doing. (laughs) So we, we pull them back and answer the why, you know, Peter Drucker says your marketing should really never have to work because you should know your customers so well, their product sells itself, you know? So really who are your targets? Who are the competitive alternatives? If you didn't exist, who would they go to? What unique values do those attributes and values bring to customers and who are they? So we really insist on doing that work to lay a foundation before we start, you know, we have this roadmap to start. Yeah. No, I mean, it's the same thing with sales strategy in the sense that people hire salespeople and they just sort of turn them loose. And yes. as an organization, they've never gone through the same process of putting together their sales strategy. And there's a number of things that are commonalities, you know, sales and marketing are kissing cousins, but yes, that whole concept of, for me, it's always starting with what's the client thinking? What does the client mm-hmm. want, need, or lack? Why does it matter to them? So they can. And then right. And if you didn't exist, who would, who would sell to them? <laughs> yeah. Right. And how are you different? <laughs> yes. And then the ideal client avatar you know, the client journey, how you're going to create, and you do create a, you know, delightful journey all the way through. Oh, I would love to compare. I would love to compare customer journey (laughs) IP with you because we do that as marketers, right? What are all the touch points that a potential customer has with you, your salespeople or your company that includes your website that includes seeing you at an event that includes getting a sales call. Um, filling out a form, right? So what are all those touch points? What is their emotional state along each of those, right? Or is it neutral? And and emotions, yeah. Absolutely. So you and I are trying to address the same things with two different functions, right? Yeah. And I have to say, it's funny you say sales and marketing are kissing cousins. I love that because um, my team knows a part of our approach to these engagements is if you don't admire, respect, revere, and support your salespeople, then we we might as well not be in business. Because sales teams have their feet on the street. They bring knowledge that we don't have. They are out doing the work. So it's really for us to sort of optimize whatever we do to support them. But it comes from that input, right? We can't can't do it without you. So that's very important to us. No, I, you know, the, the, the two sides of the, 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 that equation. I mean, if you don't sell anything, you're not going to stay in business, period. And so but you have to be able to also provide salespeople with um, high quality leads, you know, with yes. 
the, the right ideal clients coming to you, that you're creating the spark in, in the right places so you can make those connections. And then to your point that you're really guiding that entire journey and providing the assets that are needed um, along that journey, because no one, very few people, certainly in a human to human sales relationship in a B2B world are going to make a decision snap, you know, it, it, they need to, to look at the organization, they do their due diligence. They have to understand how that's going to be a fit for them. You know, there's a process that you go through and every organization, Absolutely. it's going to be a little bit different and what that looks like, but, um, understanding that is so critical. So, you know, we sort of <laughs> say, wait a little bit here, cause we're just having mm-hmm. so much fun with that, that part of the conversation. Um, but when you look at, um, the clients that you work with and, and, you know, your own internal culture and the people that are listening to this show, I mean, you know, we're tuned in to talk about impactful culture. What, what's a piece of advice that you would give to, you know, the small business owners that are out there, the people who are in the trenches on the teams um, that they could do and they should do to improve their culture, the communication within the team, the support that they have um, so that they can, you know, build a stronger business? Well, I think that every sort of style and philosophy and way of a leader trickles all the way down through the business. So I think the most important quality for me in a leader is awareness to really understand, look at how you communicate with your teams in what manner, frequency, and what you bring, your body language in meetings, your mentoring and support, you're connecting them to the greater why of the business. Why are, Why do we exist, right? Ours is to make executives feel safe, which may sound a little off, but we do it because CEOs feel very safe knowing Wall Coffee is running their marketing. We're going to do what they say they're going to do. And that really stems from our values, Lynn. And I think that every business really should stop. And if they don't have values in place, they should do that exercise with their team. It's yeah. very easy that, you know, there's so many resources out there about understanding your values and go through that exercise with your team. And if you do have them in place to look at them and see, have they evolved? Is there something that needs to be adjusted? And we really believe in a, in a sales or sort of pitch circumstance and sharing those values with our potential clients, because we want them to understand the type of people and the type of organization they're doing business with. And that no matter who you work with at Wild Coffee, you're going to have someone who sees you as more than a partner, someone who is a lifelong learner, someone who believes that energy is everything and we're fearless in our ideation. So those, those values have been with us for five years, but I think really those are the cornerstone of the organization and everything stems from that. Yeah. Well, Thank you so much, Amy, uh, for sharing how you can build a truly impactful culture in an organization today. And that last piece of advice so that um, everyone who's tuned in can act on that um, either this week um, or next week and um, move your company forward. So I know that our listeners are going to want to know more about you, Amy, and where they can find you. Sure. So Wild Coffee Marketing is on LinkedIn. Um, If you search up Wild Coffee Marketing, we're also at wildcoffeemarketing.com. And um, we have some really interesting marketing resources there, blogs, infographics, sort of the latest in that. So if you follow us, um, it's great to follow along with that. All right. That's wonderful. And we will make sure that all those links are below so that Amy and Wild Coffee Marketing are just one click away. And this has been such an informative discussion. Thank you, Amy. And thank you for everyone who tuned in. And if those who are listening, if you have ideas that you would like to share, you can leave us a comment down below. We love hearing your thoughts. And if you would like to suggest a question or a topic for discussion, you can also email us at jointheconversation at petitedequeen.com. And to stay current on all of our insightful advice and breakthrough advantages, and never miss an episode of Claim Your Career Crown, sign up for our weekly Wisdoms newsletter. And I want to thank you again for tuning in and listening. And Amy, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, Lynn. I really enjoyed it.